hey, it's good to be back talking about uh, privacy and NFTs and secret network more generally. So as a quick way of introduction, uh, my name is Tor. I'm the founder of Secret Foundation, one of the many organizations and entities supporting secret network as a layer one. Uh, secret is a very unique layer one. It's the only layer one that has privacy by default for smart contracts, meaning you can use encrypted inputs, encrypted outputs, and encrypted state. And what that means for applications in a ton of different verticals, whether it's DeFi, NFTs, et cetera, is substantial. Today, the focus is on NFTs. Uh, I'll probably get into gaming a little bit as well. But the one big takeaway from all of this, uh, if you're listening and you're not as familiar with Secret or with, with the importance of privacy to NFTs, is that native privacy and native access control is what's going to unlock not just billions in value, but trillions in value for the NFT ecosystem. Uh, just in terms of what's going to be made possible for NFTs, taking this next natural evolution forward, hopefully by the end of this, you'll understand why this is such a big advancement. So I'm going to share, actually, I, I brought a few slides. Let's see if I can't uh, share one particular screen with you guys. I'm fairly, sure, I'm fairly certain I can. Cool. I will go into slideshow mode. So uh, our main NFT marketplace is known as Stash. Uh, if you go to stashh.io, you'll be able to browse uh, a bunch of secret NFTs for yourself. Stash has been on mainnet for quite a while. We'll go into some of the history of Stash on this, but we're going to start with an exploration specifically uh, of secret NFTs. Uh, and secret NFTs are a general concept on secret network. They exist across the entire network. Uh, they exist all across the Cosmos. Secret Network is a layer one that's built on Cosmos and Tendermint. So there's a lot of interoperability advantages you get with Secret. Uh, so I'll get into Stash, I'll get into Secret NFTs, but let's start at the beginning, which is just NFTs themselves. I'm speaking at NFTCon, so I probably don't have to spend a lot of time on this slide, uh, but NFTs dominated the second half of last year and drove a ton of growth, not just for you know, digital collectibles and things like that, but just crypto in general, awareness of this entire industry. Whereas people might've thought about it before as being, you know, Dogecoin or DeFi. Now they really understand it to be art and culture and collectible, something a lot deeper and related to our identity and our communities. So we want to unlock an even bigger future. That's the goal of Secret in general, is we want to expand usability, expand adoption for all of Web3. We believe that the way to do that is through privacy. But already NFTs are showing that even without all these privacy controls, there is a ton you can already do. They already represent a new permissionless way of storing value, trading value, uh, representing things as scarce digital assets, having digital scarcity. Uh, and we believe that also they're, they're already showing promise in representing real world assets, assets that may not have a digital equivalent, uh, but these types of non-fungible tokens can revolutionize all types of different industries, whether that is art uh, or whether it's finance uh, or whether it's any other cultural asset or gaming. However, there is one very big problem, and that is the public by default nature of every layer one blockchain. Uh, blockchains are built to be public by default. And we're told that that's a good thing because it allows for you know, not only uh, having this idea of decentralized consensus and verifiability. But you know, there's also this transparency and public auditability that helps ensure that you know, the blockchain is a wonderful record of our histories, our digital histories. You know, when it's Bitcoin, you're talking about your financial history. When it's Ethereum, it's all sorts of smart contracts and applications in that history. But by making it all public by default, even though technically that allows it to be more auditable, it's really actually awful for doing things like ownership. It means that digital ownership no longer feels like real world ownership. There's not the same level of privacy and control that we get as owners of real world assets. That hurts growth because that means there's certain things we can't represent as NFTs, or there's things that we don't want to represent as NFTs. There's things we may not link want linked to our specific identity, or we don't want to expose one part of our identity without exposing all of our identity. In the real world, we don't have to do that. If we invite somebody over to our house, we get to show them what's on our walls. We get to you know, show them everything that we 
own or think about, we let them into our lives, but we consent to that. On the blockchain, your house doesn't have a front door. Even though technically you're the owner of everything that's in your wallet, the control that you get from that, the privacy you get from that is minimal. People see exactly what you own. They see exactly what you've done at all times, not just for people you transact with, not just for people you trust, but anybody who ever inspects the blockchain. And when it comes to assets like NFTs that are scarce, non-fungible, identifiable, linked to your reputation, that is a huge security risk and a huge usability problem. So we don't actually think that NFTs that don't have these native privacy and access control features are very interesting. We don't think long-term that they build any value, hold any value. They're just probably going to disintegrate, essentially. We don't want to build NFTs for just the next couple of years. We want to build them for the evolving arc of the decentralized web, for whatever happens in the next couple of decades for Web3. So instead, uh, we built a new kind of blockchain. Secret is private by default. And that means that secret NFTs are private by default NFTs. They use secret smart contracts. On secret, every smart contract you deploy is a secret smart contract by default. Meaning, as I said at the beginning, that you can use encrypted inputs and outputs, and also the state of the contract is encrypted. What that means is instead of being public to everybody, it is only public to the owner or only public to a set of whitelisted addresses. You could still specify to make everything public to everyone. But the important thing to remember about public versus private is if something starts private, you can always choose to make it public. But if something starts public, it can never be private again. The cat is out of the bag, everything is already revealed. So this is really the only direction that digital ownership can work. Starting private to you, starting as something that's only accessible by the owner and then progressively being revealed as necessary but you have to start private by default. It only works in that one direction. That means secret NFTs though, get these really cool properties. You can either have public metadata that are accessible by all users, or you can have private metadata only accessible by the owner or protected metadata that can be shared only in certain circumstances with certain accounts or users. You can also have public or private ownership. You can start with private ownership of an asset that you reveal at a later time. And you get also these really cool native access control properties. Because as you can see, not every user has the same permissions to even see the data that the NFT is representing. And that is really critically important for the adoption of NFTs, or if we want NFTs to represent anything beyond just uh, a PFP or a public flex, right? If the entire economy was just conspicuous consumption, a lot of things wouldn't get built. A lot of things wouldn't get done. A lot of commerce couldn't happen. Secret NFTs allow for those kinds of new creator economies and digital economies to be built. It's just a much more strong, secure, and sustainable foundation. Here's just a few highlighted use cases for secret NFTs. So one example would be creator monetization. You can put something in the public metadata so that users have a preview of the work that's contained in the private metadata. And then the private metadata is actually the high quality work itself. So maybe you've got a preview audio track and the private metadata is the full version or the watermarked version is in the public metadata. The 8K resolution is in the private metadata. So now the owner can show what they own and prove that they have ownership and link it back to the creator. So you can always say which creator issued the NFT. That can be public. But the asset itself sits in the control of the owner who then gets to determine who can see it and how and why. So that also relates to this private galleries use case. It's a lot, uh, it, you can already see how it's a lot simpler to do something like a gallery on secret network where somebody could rent access to view your secret NFTs. Uh, or you know you can use a real world gallery and link it back to private metadata that you as the owner have access to. And you're the only person who can display these NFTs publicly because you're the only person who can actually access that private metadata and put it up on a screen, as opposed to just anybody who inspects the blockchain. There's also a huge amount of advantage for artists and collectors who care about financial privacy and security. Uh, A lot of the time, people will say that people don't really care about their privacy. As soon as your privacy gets violated, you care immediately. And in the crypto space, we see it happen on a daily basis. This is a massive security risk, especially for people who own scarce digital assets. 
We want to democratize digital ownership. Everybody should be able to own something important to them online and benefit from it. It should be a productive asset for them. It should be something that they can safely link to their identity. But the challenge has always been once you make all of that public on chain, you open yourself up from a security perspective. It's just really challenging. So instead, Secret starts private by default, not only for your NFTs, but for any token transactions on the network, which helps protect artists who are getting paid out royalties or marketplace payments. And last thing I'm going to highlight about a secret NFT use case would be community access control. This is just a way better way of managing access to communities because you can be a part of a community, you can express your identity with that community without also doxing your wallet and everything in it. You can be selectively revealing parts of your identity, reveal a part of your identity in order to join a community, reveal just that part of your identity to that community without having to necessarily expose everything else that you've ever done. The real world doesn't work that way. We don't believe that the digital economy should work that way either. And with secret NFTs and with secret network more generally, that's what we've made possible. That brings me to Stash. Uh, critical to any NFT ecosystem is the ability to discover NFTs, create NFTs, trade NFTs, and talk about NFTs. So a marketplace ends up being the lifeblood of any NFT ecosystem. Stash has been built to be the flagship NFT marketplace for secret NFTs. And it's the home of all of the amazing collections that have already launched, a lot of the collections that are gonna launch in the future, representing digital art or collectibles, but they also represent gaming assets or they can represent reputational badges or identity or intellectual property or ownership of real world financial assets. Anything you can represent as a secret NFT can be traded, displayed on Stash. Uh, we've already seen uh, a ton of collections launch. I got more data in the slides that goes a little bit deeper into that and the types of collections we've seen. But the most important thing to recognize here is that this platform is really for any type of secret NFT. And secret NFTs already have the capability of representing 100 times more types of assets, doing 100 times more types of things because they come with this next generation of NFT functionality. We built Stash to be a best in class marketplace, to be the place where every collector is going to want to be. Uh, and it all leverages the unique capabilities of the protocol and secret contracts themselves. So as I said, secret contracts are, are already allowing for things like encrypted inputs, outputs, and state on the network. So not only can we use things like uh, you know, the private metadata, private ownership on Stash, you also get to build cool things like privacy preserving auctions, let's say, or privacy preserving badges and embed that in Stash as a platform. And at the same time, if you withdraw your secret NFTs from Stash, if you buy something on Stash and want to move it to another application in the network, you still get all exactly the same privacy guarantees. You still get the private metadata. You still get the private ownership. If you were solving this just through a front end, or if you were solving this on a public by default blockchain and you were relying on an application or something centralized to protect private ownership or private metadata, as soon as you left that application, you would lose those guarantees. That's not real digital ownership. To be owning something in a digital space, there needs to be composability, transferability. So Stash gives you all these privacy guarantees, but you keep your flexibility as you move across the network. And secret NFTs and secret contracts, more generally, this is not new technology. Uh, secret contracts are already securing hundreds of millions of dollars in value across the secret ecosystem. There's already been over a billion and a half dollars of trading volume on secret DEXs and DeFi platforms. So this is all on mainnet. None of this is speculative. You can go buy your first secret NFTs right now. You can be using all these applications. It's not just a promise. It's not just a hackathon project. We've had secret contracts live on mainnet for over a year and a half. Which brings me to the timeline more generally. So as I said, secret contracts launched on mainnet in September 2020. In February 2021, uh, the first secret NFT standard grant was awarded. And then finally, the reference implementation was finished in that April. In summer, stash development began. In the fall, we reached testnet. In December, finally mainnet with the ability to import whitelisted collections, to buy, to sell all the main functionality you would need for a marketplace. And then in Q1, we've been working on other types of functionality, including making offers on NFTs, 
or running private auctions on platform. Uh, also adding permissionless minting so we can really expand the creator base and also supporting new file types on platform. So not just images and audio, but also video and 3D renderings and animations, things like that. And what's really fun about collecting on Stash is, you know, you can buy something, see the public metadata, and once you buy it, you are the only one who has access to that private metadata. Every time you buy something, trade something, you're unlocking something new. Uh, so we've also had a ton of traction on Stash as a platform. We launched kind of near Christmas of last year, um, but we've already onboarded over 120 unique collections to the platform. We've had 100,000 users come to the platform, 20,000 wallets connected. Uh, and we've already had, you know, millions of dollars in sales volume. And we expect that that's going to grow substantially once we open up to permissionless minting uh, and some of the other growth initiatives that we have planned. And as more applications launch in the secret ecosystem that rely on secret NFTs like secret games, uh, we just hosted a couple of them today on our Twitter spaces to talk about Orbum Wars, Chameleonville. There's probably at least a half dozen games that we've already revealed for the network. And all of these in-game assets are going to trade on secondary marketplaces like Stash. So a lot of our volume is coming from not only these initial PFP collections or exclusive content collections, but also in-game assets. And soon we hope also real world assets. Uh, meanwhile, Secret Network has grown alongside Stash. You can see Stash launched in December of 2021. And you'll notice that our graph of cumulative unique addresses on the network also starts to grow a little bit faster starting around then. Um, so we've had a number of really awesome accelerations for the network over the past months. You can also see the growth in transaction volume over on the left uh, since later last year. So we're hoping that this awesome momentum continues well into 2022. And from what I'm trying to hint at here today is that we expect it to accelerate uh, sooner than later. There's a lot of amazing opportunities coming up in the secret ecosystem for NFT creators and collectors. And there's things you can launch on secret and collect on secret that you just can't launch or collect anywhere else. So as one example, last year we announced uh, the Tarantino NFT collection. This is an example of the exclusive content use case. Uh, the public metadata represents the asset. You know that it's this special NFT launched by Quentin Tarantino representing assets um, from his screenplays of films that he wrote. Only if you bought the NFT could you view the original handwritten screenplay. Only if you bought it could you listen to exclusive audio commentary that nobody else had ever heard. Uh, I always tell people this reminds me of the Wu-Tang album, where if you bought it, you got to listen to the album. But otherwise, it was just yours. And things like that are incredibly valuable. It's a different standard of ownership. And it's a different standard of control for digital assets in a digital first economy. Uh, the first Tarantino NFT got auctioned earlier this year and it's sold for $1.1 million. So secret NFTs are incredibly valuable when they can represent really scarce real world content. And I think you're going to see this use case generalized for all types of digital content as well. Another example is uh, the Anons PFP collection. So art is public for Anons, just like other PFPs, uh, but the private metadata is your Telegram handle and it unlocks access to a secret back channel only for the Anons. This was the very first PFP collection that launched on the network. But nobody can go back to the blockchain and see the Telegram handles. So you don't dox yourself. You don't have to tell the whole world what your Telegram handle is or that you own one of these things if you don't want to. But you can prove to the rest of the Anon community that you are a part of the community. You unlock that access by providing private information to the private metadata. Another example, and I love this example, is Mystic Skulls. So this is a 10,000 collection, and it's one of a kind, really. Uh, what you can do with Mystic Skulls is you can unwrap metadata over time. So you start with all the metadata fields wrapped, and over time, you're revealing aspects of the metadata. And then you can sell them again. You can transfer them again. Uh, you know, Just like if you were unwrapping a pack of cards for the first time, you can reveal a rare trait and relist it or you can keep revealing traits, or you can hold on to them and use them as in-game assets. So there's a ton you can do uh, with gaming assets and the flexibility of secret NFTs are, are the big secret for how all of this is going to uh, play out in our metaverse. 
As one last example, there's also the Secret Punks collection. That was one of the very first collections to launch as well. The first Punks implementation on a privacy preserving NFT platform. Uh, and punk owners can actually encrypt their own messages uh, using a private key embedded in the NFT. So only punks can encrypt these messages and only punks can prove that they were the ones who encrypted them initially. So all these kinds of really cool innovative experiments are happening in the secret ecosystem and they're really only happening in the secret ecosystem. And everything I just mentioned is on mainnet and has been on mainnet actually for five months. Actually, some of these collections have been on mainnet longer than Stash. So now that we have a public marketplace for private NFTs, you can only imagine like what the potential is actually going to look like in the coming months. Uh, so some screenshots of the platform here, but like I said, just go to stash.io. You can experience it for yourself. There's some highlights of some of the collections that have launched, some of the things that you can purchase when you go there. There's a lot of other announcements that will be coming, that could be coming. Uh, Secret is also one of the lead sponsors for Decentral in Austin. We hope everybody listening chooses to come out. Uh, we'll probably be dropping a lot of alpha on stage. Uh, we're in the middle of our big shockwave growth initiative. Uh, we got two major mainnet upgrades coming, not one, but two in Q2 of this year. Tons of new applications launching, airdrops, DeFi stuff, NFT stuff. It's probably one of the most, it, it may be the fastest. I don't want to say like we're the fastest growing layer one, period, because that's like not fair to say. How do you measure that? I just think we are. And we're absolutely the fastest growing layer one with native privacy because we're also the only layer one currently live on mainnet with any kind of native privacy. So not only were we first, not only are we biggest, we're also growing really fast and we'd love to have you be a part of the community. Uh, if you want to be a part of the community, here's some links for Stash. Um, and you should also follow Secret Network on Twitter. Pretty easy. Just follow Secret Network. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's my first name, last name. So that's Tor Bear, T-O-R-B-A-I-R. -R. Otherwise, grab these links, uh, show up on Stash, follow Stash on Twitter. Go to the Stash Discord, contact the team if there's a collection you want to launch, if you've got questions. We'll have a lot more secret NFT related announcements over the coming weeks and months. So if you don't want to miss any of that, just follow us across all these channels. Uh, we think secret NFTs are revolutionary. We think privacy is going to revolutionize things for both artists and for collectors. So if you're listening to this and you are an artist or you are a collector, get in touch. Uh, we would love to help you make your dreams reality. Uh, and I love talking to artists. I am one myself. So please reach out to me directly and I'll do my best. I do check my Twitter DMs occasionally, but please reach out. Um, and uh, to the NFT con team, thanks for having me on. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity and I'll, I'll see you guys all down in Austin for sure.